of my talk is scale dual of GKM graph. So uh, this is joint work with Tomo Matsumura, <coughs> and, uh, my former student, Ryoto Yukito. And uh, I think I need to say that uh, this is not the exactly notion of the dual of the GKM graph. Uh, I would like to apply the KL dual uh, to study the GKM graph. And um, uh, in this talk, I would like to share uh, the uh, result uh, with us uh, <coughs> um, over us. Okay, so uh, first, uh, let's start from the uh, KL dual. KL dual is a, a notion of the dual of some configuration of the vectors. So uh, let's start from the uh, uh, M vectors in R to the N. And uh, in this talk, uh, I assume that uh, these vectors span the R to the N. And uh, then uh, uh, by the easy uh, linear algebra, uh, there is an uh, N by M matrix, let's say large error. Uh, this gives an subjective homomorphism from the R to the M to the R to the N. So M is a number of the vectors and N is an, uh, a dimension uh, which uh, leaves the vectors. Then uh, the KL dual is defined by the uh, following way. So uh, we often denote it by the P. Uh, the KL dual configuration of A is the following configuration, so denoted by B. And B is an uh, M vectors, so sits inside R M minus N. And uh, this satisfies the following exact sequence. So uh, the composition of A and BT uh, becomes zero. And uh, A is a subjective map and uh, PT is an injective map. Okay, then we get an uh, exact sequence. And also kind of A is an uh, uh, image of the PT. And uh, B is an uh, N minus N by matrix, which is uh, coming from the uh, vectors B. Okay, so this is a uh, KL dual. And uh, if you are interested in uh, these notions uh, more precisely, uh, then uh, you can read uh, Sigra's book about the polytope or uh, Bukhsava Taras's uh, Bukhsava Panov's book about toy topology. Okay, so let me show you some example, easy example. So let's take uh, the configurations in R23. So let's say, uh, let's take uh, E1, E2, E3. This is the standard basis of the R23. And minus E1, minus E2, minus E3. Uh, this is an, just a linear, uh, combination of the E1, E2, E3. Then uh, we can get uh, this vector, three times four vectors, one, zero, zero, minus one, and zero, one, zero, minus one, and zero, zero, one, minus one. And then uh, we have the following exact sequence by uh, the matrix one, 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 okay? So four integers, six integers are, and this gives an, uh, KLDL configuration of this A. Okay, so then we get the KLDL configuration of A by B. So one, one, one. So four integers, four same integers. And uh, maybe uh, as you can easy to notice that there are several choices of the KLDL. Uh, but uh, you can easy to see that this B is unique up to general linear group actions. So this general linear group actions acts on each uh, vectors at the same time. And also it's up to the an order of the vectors. Then uh, we can determine the KLDR uniquely. And moreover, I'm sorry, this doesn't work. Okay, good. Moreover, uh, we can also define the KLDR on the Z to the N. Actually, uh, in the Z to the N case, it, there is several um, uh, difficulty happens. For example, there exists some atrocious or some things. But uh, if we uh, assume some uh, some good conditions, then uh, we can deal C to the N like uh, vector spaces. And uh, for more general cases uh, with torsions or some things, Rossi and Terracini also studied about the integer KL duals. So in this in this talk, we we, we will use the C to the integer KL dual uh, with some good conditions like a vector space. Okay, so this is a notion of the KL dual. And uh, I would like to uh, apply this KL dual to the GKM graph. So uh, from the next section, I will introduce an uh, abstract GKM graph. And actually a GKM graph is motivated from the GKM manifold. And I think uh, Oliver Gertusch, Professor Oliver Gertusch already uh, 
uh, introduced about the GKM manifold. And uh, this GKM graph is related to this manifold. But uh, in this talk, uh, because of the time, I will omit such kind of uh, geometric motivations. Uh, but uh, we can define abstractly, a GKM graph that abstractly, we can define it. Uh, this is the idea of the Kirman and Zara. So uh, let's define it. So GKM graph is defined on an uh, invariant graph. Okay, maybe I will use something. Okay, so uh, let's say gamma VE, gamma equal VE, V is on vertices and edges. And uh, we assume that this uh, graph is an invariant graph. So invariant means that the, uh, all of the outgoing edges has an exactly M edges. So EP means that the outgoing edges from the vertex P. Okay. So uh, for example, the left two graphs are three variant graph because all of the uh, vertex has an, uh, exactly three outgoing edges. And uh, the right graph is a four variant graph. Okay. So we can easily check it. And uh, we will define the level on this graph, then we call it a GKM graph. And GKM graph is defined, uh, is often denoted by gamma alpha nabra. And uh, actually this alpha gives some level, and I will define it. And this alpha is a level on edges, whose target space is on C to the N. And we often regard T to the N as an, a secondary cohomology of the classifying space of T. And uh, with, uh, if this level satisfies the following three conditions, then we call it a GKM graph. So what is the three conditions? And uh, first of all, this alpha, level alpha, is often called an actual function. Okay? An actual function satisfies the following three conditions. The first condition is alpha PQ is equal to minus alpha QP. PQ is an uh, edge from vertex P to the Q, I I'm sorry, <laughs> this one, okay. And uh, the QP is an uh, edge of this direction, okay? And this first condition says that uh, these two uh, label has an opposite signs, okay? So sometimes uh, we assume uh, this condition is a uh, uh, more general condition. Uh, for example, uh, we permit uh, the, uh, the same signs, or sometimes we permit it's an irrational numbers for the case of the OB fold. But uh, in this case, we always assume it's a it has a negative sign. And the second condition says that, uh, let's consider the uh, alpha E around the uh, P. So alpha E is a set of outgoing edges, uh, actual functions, set of the actual functions of all outgoing edges from P, and P is for any vertex. And uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, second conditions says that uh, it spans C to the N. Uh, sometimes uh, this condition does not assume in the case, uh, in, the, uh, in the GKM theory. But in this talk, uh, we assume these conditions. Uh, this sometimes called the effectiveness conditions because uh, it's coming from the effective tolerance action. And uh, the uh, in usual second condition is uh, is about the pairwise linear independentness. And uh, pairwise linear independent says that uh, if you take uh, two edges from alpha e, uh, from this set, uh, then uh, these two uh, alpha. Uh, if, you, uh, if you choose any pair of the uh, actual functions from this alpha E, then uh, these are linear independent. This is a pair is linear independent. For example, the uh, left one, this one is uh, linearly independent because x1, x2, x3 is a generator of the uh, secondary cohomology of PT3. On the other hand, the uh, right example is uh, not linearly independent, but it's a pair is linearly independent because uh, x1, x2 uh, is a generator of the uh, H2, PT2. And actually, uh, for example, if you choose x1 minus x1 minus x2, then they are linearly independent. So uh, we can also say uh, such kind of things for any pairs. 
Okay, so this condition says that the, uh, this condition calls the pair is linearly independent. And the final condition, uh, I think this condition is the most important condition in the GKM, uh, GKM graph. Uh, so, uh, so let's read the conditions. So for any edge PQ, which connecting uh, vertex two vertices P and Q, uh, there exists a bijective map, Navier PQ, from EP to the EQ. Now uh, we defined uh, this uh, m variant graph. So um, the outgoing edges from P and from Q has an exactly E, uh, exactly M outgoing edges. So there is a set theoretical bijective map between them. Then uh, this map satisfies our following conditions. Uh, this condition calls the congruence relations. If you take uh, any uh, edge from EP, here I read this part. Uh, there is an integer, say CPQE, and which satisfies this condition. And this condition says that uh, are called that uh, congress relations. And this condition is very important in the GKM graph. And um, um, in particular in this talk, uh, the integer of this one is important in the later of this talk. So in usually, um, uh, this condition also said that this is mod zero by a mod alpha PQ. Okay, so, uh, so uh, in usual uh, chicken theory, uh, this integer is an omitted, but uh, in this talk, uh, this integer is uh, important in the later. Okay, so this is called the congress relations. And uh, uh, let me explain it by using the uh, examples. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, this NABRA is a set of the uh, bijective map on each edges. It's called a connection. And let me show you some example about the GKM graph. So uh, the following two level graph satisfies uh, three conditions. So uh, this becomes a GKM graph. And now this X1, X2, or X1, X2, X3 is an uh, generators of the uh, secondary cohomology of the classifying, spe torus, a classifying space of torus. Okay, uh, let me check the uh, three conditions on the uh, first GKM graph. Okay, so uh, now this GKM graph, uh, this graph has exactly two vertex, and these two vertex is connecting by uh, three edges. And um, for example, the first condition uh, can be easy to check that. So let's consider uh, this edge. Then uh, there are uh, this direction is an x1, and this direction is an opposite direction, has a uh, negative x1. So uh, this satisfies the first conditions, okay? So uh, this also falls for uh, each edges. We can easily check it. And uh, this also satisfies the uh, pair's linear independence. Uh, because uh, we've already checked, for example, around here, this is minus x1, x1 plus x2, and minus x2. So these are, uh, uh, if you choose any pair of, from this, then they are linearly independent. We can also check it for around the P. And uh, let's check the third condition, congress relations. Okay, I will change my color. So, uh, this third condition said that there uh, are uh, these kind of things. So the important part is the first part. The difference of the uh, corresponding actual functions is written by alpha PQ. So let's check on uh, this blue, uh, this green edge. Now, uh, for example, uh, let's consider this direction. Now this direction corresponds to this direction. Then uh, this satisfies uh, this condition. So uh, let's check it. Now um, this x1 corresponds to uh, this minus x1. So uh, this first part, this part, is a correspondence actual function minus x1. And this later one is uh, this x1, okay? And this can be written by minus two x1. And in this case, uh, alpha pq, this one, is nothing but this x1. 
this is alpha pq and in this case uh, the integer is cpqe is this one okay so uh, this kind of kind of condition holds for all uh, edges uh, for example uh, let's check for the other cases so actually uh, along this edge uh, x1 corresponds to the uh, minus x1 and also this minus x1 minus x2 correspond to minus x2 in this case so because uh, some we can check the same conditions minus x2 minus this minus x1 minus x2 uh, this is equal to uh, x1 okay and uh, x1 is exactly this part uh, because uh, here is an alpha pq and this is x1 i'm sorry it's a little bit messy and uh, the integer is one in this case and uh, for the other cases this part we can also check it such kind of things and uh, we can check uh, these conditions for all edges so uh, we see that uh, this graph with level is on a gkm graph okay so uh, this is an uh, definition of the gkm graph so do you have any questions so far? Okay, okay, let's progress. So uh, I'd like to define the uh, gale dual of the GKM graph. So um, maybe as uh, maybe you remember that the GKM uh, gale dual is a, a dual of the configurations. So uh, we want to find some uh, configuration from the GKM graph. Actually, uh, the actual functions on each vertex are maybe regarded as a vector configuration in ZN. So uh, this is our starting point with my student. So it means that uh, this set of the actual functions of uh, EP. So EP is an outgoing edges from P, which is defined by alpha E1 to alpha EM. Uh, this may be regarded as a vector configuration in the C to Cn, and C to Cn is H to Btn. So uh, we can define the KLDL on it. And uh, uh, this is the question with my student. Uh, can we say something uh, interesting about the uh, KLDL of extra functions on each vertex? So this is our uh, starting point. And um, my uh, former student found some uh, interesting uh, properties about this. And uh, I and Tomo Matsumura are progress their work, uh, his works. Okay, so uh, let me start from the uh, precise definition of the KLDL of GKM graph. So um, I'd like to prepare for definitions. So let gamma alpha nabra be an uh, m one GKM graph. And let EP uh, be an outgoing edges from P. Let's say it's an E1 to the EM. Then uh, we can define the free abelian group generated by EP. Uh, we can denote it by CEP. So this CEP is nothing but the uh, direct product of C1 to the CEM. Now uh, this E1 to the EM corresponds to the edges. But in this module, uh, this is uh, uh, just the formal generators. And of course, this is isomorphic to C to CM. And then uh, by the, using the actual functions, uh, we can define the subject to homomorphism from this CEP to the uh, C to the N, which is defined by uh, this alpha P, P is on the vertex, defined by this way. Now EI is on the edge, but uh, in this algebra, this is the formal generators. So uh, we determine uh, this generator that goes to alpha EI. And then uh, we get this matrix, M by N matrix. Okay. And uh, we can define the KL dual on it. So we say it on the row P. And the row P is on uh, M vectors sitting inside C to M minus N, uh, which is defined by uh, this exact sequence. Uh, actually, row P appears here. It's a row P transpose appeared here. And the row P can be denoted by M column vectors. 
and we gave a name this m column vectors by rho p e one to the rho p e m. Then we get the uh, label on the edges. So we, we say it's a row whose target space is z to the m minus n, which is defined by rho p as an rho p e. Rho p e is appeared here. So now uh, this e is an, uh, one of the orthogonal edges from p. And uh, we call uh, this new label graph a uh, uh, KLDL of GKM graph. So the definition is, is as follows. We say uh, this gamma rho nabla is a label graph with uh, nabla with connections. It's called a KLDL of a GKM graph. Okay, this is the definition of the KLDL of GKM graph. So let me show you by example. So uh, in this talk, uh, for simplicity, uh, we only consider for the case of the m equal n plus one. So uh, this case is uh, also called by, called as an complexity one GKM graph. And uh, this complexity one uh, notion is already appeared, I think, in Anton's talk. And he's, uh, I think, uh, he was talked about, uh, he talked about uh, a complexity one, uh, uh, torus mindful or some such kind of things. And actually uh, this uh, complexity one GKM graph is related to uh, such kind of notions. Okay, so let's think about that case. So uh, in this case, the complexity one case, it's KL dual is nothing but the integers because uh, n plus one minus n is n one, so it becomes an integer. And uh, in this case, we can easy to find the KL dual by this equation. Okay, so a uh, KLDL is defined by the uh, uh, exact sequence. And uh, that exact sequence is uh, equivalent uh, to these uh, equations. Okay, so uh, this alpha e is an actual function. And uh, we put some coefficient on this and sum, uh, summon all of them. Then it becomes a zero. Then uh, this rho e becomes a KLDL of the GKM graph. So let me show you some example, more concrete example. So uh, the left one is a complexity one GKM graph, and the right one is its scale dual. Somebody's asking me something. Ah, maybe uh, my PDF file is uploaded. Uh, thank you, Larry. So, okay. And um, so let's compute the scale dual on this part X. So uh, this vertex is actual function is this one. So minus x1, minus x1, minus x2, and minus x2. And uh, one of the KLDL can be taken as this one because uh, these two satisfies this equation. So let's check it, uh, uh, but it's very easy. So for example, uh, the first one is one minus x1. So one times minus x1 and plus, the so next one is minus one, and minus x1, minus x2, minus x1, minus x1, minus x2, and plus the final one is minus x2 and one, one minus x2. Then you can easily compute it. This is just an elementary school problem. It's an equal to zero. So uh, we see that uh, this triple uh, becomes an uh, KL dual on this vertex. And actually, we can also choose uh, the other KLDL by multiplying the negative signs, uh, but uh, we can identify it uh, up to general linear group actions. Uh, in this case, it's just a scalar with a minus one. And uh, by the similar way, uh, we can also find for the other KLDLs like this. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, KLDL. And uh, I and uh, Yukito I found some properties about this. So I want to introduce it. So this is a property. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. May I ask a question, please? Oh, okay, it's okay. We go back to the previous slide. Okay. I'm looking at the equation in red there. Mm -hmm. In the case of uh, if th this 
formally looks like something very familiar in the case when m equals n plus one. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the toric orbifolds are weighted projector spaces. And that equation looks like the necessary and sufficient condition mm -hmm. for a set for the fan to be a fan of weighted projective space where the PEIs are the weights. Mm -hmm. Just formally, just formally, it but looks wait, like wait, it. uh, It's a weighted projective space is an uh, toric manifold, right? Orbifold, orbifold. Uh, yeah, yeah, to toric orbifold, right? Uh, but uh, in our case, uh, we think about the, uh, uh, this M is a dimension, and uh, this N is an uh, uh, acting torus. The acting torus, oh, I see, the numbers are not the same. Sorry, I, uh, it looked formally the same. Sorry, uh, you've changed the meaning of M and N. Ah, oh, that's right, yes. Okay, thank uh, you. M is a dimension of the manifold. Okay, okay, thank you for asking. Can I okay. also ask a question? Okay. Um, uh, Shintao, mm -hmm. uh, do you consider also a, a connection on this scale dual graph? Yes. And is it the same or what is it? Ah, uh, yes, it's same with an actual function, uh, with an uh, GKM graph. So you just copy the, uh, the connection from the, from the yeah, other that's one? Yeah, right. that's okay. right. That's right. Uh, I want to uh, introduce uh, what's, the uh, what's the rule of the connections okay, in the next slide. Okay. Okay. So this is a uh, theorem uh, which find uh, with Yukito. So uh, let gamma alpha nabra be a complexity one GKM graph. And uh, gamma rho nabra be its scale dual. Then uh, we can take its scale dual uh, by the configuration of the integers. Then uh, this integer satisfies the following two conditions. The first one is, actually this is corresponding to the pairwise linearly independent of the GKM graph. Uh, there, is, uh, there are three edges which satisfies uh, these conditions. This means that uh, the KL dual of these three edges are not zero. And the second condition is uh, corresponding to the um, uh, connections. And uh, let's think about the uh, uh, two KL duals, which is corresponding to the connections. Then it must have the same absolute values. So this is the second condition. And uh, actually, this condition is coming from the, uh, the first and uh, the third condition, congressivations of the GKM graph. So uh, let, let me explain by the examples. So uh, the first example, uh, the first figure uh, shows an uh, explanation of the first, first property, this property. And uh, uh, this graph, uh, I wrote about the uh, graph of the uh, three bind graph. Uh, in this case, the uh, uh, three choices of the graph is exactly all of the vertex, uh, all of the edges. So uh, if we put, uh, for example, zero, one, two on these edges as a level, then uh, the first condition says that, this condition says that uh, this kind of level doesn't come from the uh, KL dual of the GKM, gra GKM graph. Okay, so zero does not appear in this case. Okay, somebody ask me. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Klaus Altman's uh, asking, uh, is the Gale dual of a GKM again a GKM? No, no, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's, uh, it's no. Uh, for example, uh, uh, if you think about the uh, complexity one case, uh, in this case, it does not have this, uh, it does not, uh, it does not satisfy the condition of the GKM graph. So uh, first, I speak that uh, this is not the uh, notion uh, of the uh, exact notion of the dual of GKM manifold, a uh, GKM graph. So this is just a uh, curious definition uh, of my student. Okay. So uh, and uh, the second condition says that uh, this one. So let's think about the uh, connection along this E. And uh, then, uh, uh, for example, E prime corresponds to the Nabra E E prime and E2 prime corresponds to Nabra E E2 prime. And the second condition says that uh, they, uh, their gale dual has the same absolute value. So in this case, it's okay because two and minus two has the same absolute value and one and one has the same absolute value. But uh, uh, please notice that uh, this 
Uh, this quantum doesn't say anything about this part. Okay, so uh, we can choose any, any numbers on this edge. So this is the property uh, which we find with Yukito. And uh, uh, Yukito is already graduated. So uh, uh, in uh, final defense of the Yukito, uh, Tomo Matsumura was, uh, was sitting at his final defense. At that time, he's really interested in uh, this, uh, his talk, uh, Yukito's talk. So uh, we continue uh, this work uh, with Tomo Matsumura. Okay, somebody asked me, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Grigori's question, is gel dual of gel dual is GKM, which is isomorphic to the initial GKM graph? Ah, okay, um, I, I'm sorry, uh, this notion is not the, uh, exactly dual notion. So, um, so uh, there is some levels of the uh, gel dual of gel dual with GKM, but uh, it might not be satisfied, it, it may not be satisfied the GKM conditions. Okay. Uh, this is still a problem, I think. This is still an interesting problem when uh, it satisfies GKM conditions or not. Okay, so anyway, uh, I will introduce my uh, uh, main result. Uh, we have two, two theorems about the KL dual. So, um, so to state that, uh, so first we assume the following conditions. Um, so let's assume the GKM graph. Uh, this is a complex one GKM graph. So uh, it's target space as an, um, uh, this dimension, Z to the N. And we assume that this extends to the torus graph. So torus graph is a complexity zero a GKM graph. Okay, so complexity zero means that uh, this target space, the dimension of this target space is, is exactly the same with an, a valency of the graph. So in this case, it's n plus one parent graph. So its target space becomes n, C to the n plus one. So this is called the torus graph. And we assume this kind of condition in the stock uh, to state the first theorem. So um, uh, this is an uh, example of this one. So uh, actually this gamma alpha nabra uh, is our complex D1 GKM graph. Actually this gamma alpha nabra is coming from the uh, torus graph, gamma alpha tilde nabra. Actually this, is an, uh, this has an, uh, three generators. And uh, this satisfies the GKM condition. So uh, this is called the torus graph. And uh, torus graph is introduced by uh, Maida Mastapanov. And uh, this is uh, a kind of the combinatorial counterpart of the torus manifold. Okay, a torus manifold is a generalization of the toric manifold. Okay, so uh, if we put plug x1 plus x2 to the x3, then we obtain uh, this complexity one GKM graph. So we assume this kind of conditions in this uh, in this theorem, okay. So um, uh, I, I want to state the first theorem. Uh, let gamma rho nabra uh, be a KL dual of the gamma alpha nabra. So uh, then, uh, so uh, to state the first theorem, I also uh, introduce uh, these notions. Uh, this notion is called an. Uh, uh, actually, there are several names of these notions, but uh, in this talk, I will call this is an equivalent cohomology of GKM graph. Uh, because uh, this is related with an uh, ordinary equivalent cohomology of the torus, uh, torus actions on the GKM manifold. So uh, I put this name on, on this object. And uh, this object is an, um, uh, we denote it by H star gamma alpha. Uh, this is a set of the functions from the vertex to the H star BTN. Okay, H star BTN is nothing but the polynomial ring. So uh, each FP and FQ has an uh, polynomial. And the uh, condition is the following condition. Let's consider the difference of the FP and FQ. Uh, P and Q is connected by edges. Then uh, this is a uh, GKM graph. So there is some uh, actual function on PQ. Then uh, this difference is divided by this actual function. Okay. So uh, now actual function uh, may be regarded as a second degree cohomology. Of the BTN. So uh, if this question satisfies, then uh, uh, we call it an equivalent cohomology of GKM graph. Uh, I think the interesting problem in the GKM theory is to uh, determine the uh, ring structure of the H star gamma alpha. Actually, this H star gamma alpha has a ring structure uh, by the ring structure of the uh, polynomial ring. 
actually this is a subring of the uh, uh, product. Uh, it's a direct sum of the H star PTN. And uh, this ring structure is induced from this, from that. And, but uh, to determine the uh, generators and re uh, relations is highly non-trivial problems. So uh, the energy chem theory to determine such kind of things is a very interesting problem, I think. And uh, in the first theorem is related to uh, this problem. So I and Tomo Matsumura determine the uh, uh, ring structure for this case. And our rings, uh, this H star gamma alpha is an equivalent homology of the GKM graph, which is extend to the torus graph, is isomorphic to some uh, quotient ring. Okay, I, I will explain it later. And uh, what is this quotient ring? Now, uh, maybe you are familiar with this G gamma nabra. Actually, this G gamma nabra is isomorphic to the uh, equivalent cohomology of torus graph. And, uh, this is uh, defined by uh, this one. This is often called the face ring of GKM graph. And uh, the important part uh, in this talk is uh, uh, these generators. It's generated by Tom classes, uh, which is defined by the subgraph of the gamma. And uh, uh, I want to, <laughs> and, uh, I omit the definition of this I. Maybe uh, most of you are familiar with this uh, ideals. Uh, because uh, we are told to for this. And uh, anyway, uh, in this talk, um, uh, this J is important. So this J is described by the uh, KL dual. So how to describe it? So uh, this J is uh, generated by this one element. So this element is a linear combination of the tau i. So this tau i is a Tom class of the facet of all facet. And this row i is a KL dual. So uh, which is coming from the uh, normal edge of this facet. EI is a normal edge of this facet. Okay, so this is our uh, first main theorem. So uh, I will explain it quickly because I have uh, just seven minutes. So uh, now uh, we want to compute the uh, H star gamma alpha for this part. Okay, now our assumption is this is extend to the gamma alpha tilde nabra. And then uh, actually maybe some of you know that uh, the equivalent cohomology of the gamma alpha tilde is already known. Uh, because uh, my the master plan of the theorem, uh, this equivalent cohomology is isomorphic to uh, this one. This is face ring. And actually uh, maybe most of you know are uh, familiar. Uh, you are not familiar with the GKM graph. But you familiar with uh, this manifold? Okay, uh, CP3 with tor uh, three dimensional torus action. Actually, uh, this is a combinatorial counterpart of the uh, of these actions. Okay, so uh, actually, uh, this corresponds to some restricted action, the CP3. Okay, then uh, we can obtain uh, this kind of GKM graph. And uh, I would like to compute its equivalent cohomology, roughly speaking. And um, okay, so how to uh, get the J, ideal J, by using the Gale dual? So uh, to obtain that, uh, we need an atom class. In this case, there are four Tom classes uh, because uh, there are four facets. For example, Tom class is determined by the uh, normal actual functions. And uh, if uh, there is no vertex, uh, there, uh, the vertex, which is not on the facet, then uh, we put it zero. Then uh, this is an element of the uh, H star gamma, R, gamma tilde, gamma alpha tilde. Okay, uh, so uh, this equivalent cohomology is generated by this four object. And uh, the KL dual is uh, determined by, uh, determined from, oh, I'm sorry. So uh, I want to compute the ideal J. So to compute it, uh, we need a KL dual. So uh, in this case, the KL dual is something like this. We've already computed it. And then uh, we can find uh, this kind of things. Okay, so uh, this gives an uh, coefficient of the ideals. So uh, for example, uh, in this case, 
Uh, this is a uh, tau one. And in this case, uh, the normal KL dual is one, one, one. So let's look at the previous slide. So uh, the first one is this one. First facet is this one. And uh, this is as uh, a normal KL dual is one, one, one. So uh, we can put uh, this one as a uh, coefficient of the tau one. Actually, we can choose uh, the same uh, uh, signs. Uh, if uh, this sign is negative one, then uh, we can change it's a positive uh, at the same time around here. So uh, by this method, uh, we can choose the uh, same numbers. Okay. So uh, then uh, we can also choose one, one, one as a, a t, uh, the, uh, normal, normal gear dual of the second facet, and minus one, minus one, minus one as on the third facet and minus one, minus one, minus one, as a fourth facet. But then uh, the EDLJ is generated by this one. So, okay, the coefficient is coming from the KL duals. This is coefficient, this is minus one, minus one. Okay. Then uh, the equivalent cohomology of the gamma alpha is uh, just a quotient by uh, this EDL, uh, generated by this element the idea generated by this element. Okay, then uh, we obtain the ring structure of this H star gamma alpha. Okay. So actually uh, there is a meaning of, the, uh, of this element, but uh, I have just two minutes, so uh, I will skip this part. Okay. And uh, the second part is, uh, I have just two minutes, I'm sorry, uh, I have no, pro no time. I don't have enough time. But uh, the second main theorem, uh, I will uh, quickly uh, introduced uh, this theorem. Uh, this theorem is related to the uh, group of actual functions. And actually, uh, this notion is uh, defined in my previous uh, work. And this is related to uh, how uh, this GKM graph extends to the uh, wider GKM graph. Okay, so uh, actually, a uh, group of actual function is a kind of, uh, this kind of, uh, things. Uh, actually, this is a uh, free abelian group, uh, which is uh, the set of the function from v to the z to the n plus one. Now n plus one is the valency of the graph. Okay, and uh, it's defined by the following way. Uh, actually, this is, definition is a little bit complicated, so uh, I will skip it. Okay, uh, if you are interested in uh, this notion, uh, please ask me uh, later, uh, or uh, ask me in email. So, um, so this is a uh, uh, concrete comp computation about the uh, group of actual functions. So uh, I computed the group of actual function for this case. Uh, actually, uh, time, time is not so um, enough. I don't have enough time, so I will skip this part. And actually, uh, the group of actual functions in the previous cases is uh, generated by this one. Okay, and uh, this is isomorphic to C2. Okay, so uh, I have one minute. The uh, final main theorem is the following. So uh, if gamma rho nabra uh, be a KL dual of the GKM graph, and uh, A uh, be an actual, a group of actual functions, then uh, we can say the following things. If uh, the, uh, there is an element of the group of functions uh, which restricts to the, uh, some vertex, is same with an KL dual if and only if this group of actual function is z to the n plus one. And by using my uh, previous uh, <coughs> work, uh, this is equivalent to the uh, following things. Gamma alpha nabra extend to the torus graph, gamma alpha childa nabra. So uh, let me show you some example by example. So uh, the KL dual of this one, this GKM graph, is easy to compute it to this one. And uh, actually uh, this scale dual is uh, not an element of the group of actual function, okay? So because uh, this element is not generated by these two elements. Okay, Ma maybe you can easily to check that. If uh, these two elements are generated to this one, then x1 must be one, and then this is minus one then uh, this minus C2 must be two, uh, but in this case, C must be minus two. So it's never equal to one, one, one. 
So uh, this says that uh, by using the theorem two, uh, we see that this gamma alpha nabra, actually gamma alpha nabra is this, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is a KLDL, but as uh, the previous one, uh, this is a uh, GKM graph, uh, does not extend to any uh, torus graph, gamma alpha tilde nabra. So this is our uh, second main theorem. So sorry for rushing. So uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, shall we unmute ourselves and thank the speaker? Thank you, Shintaro.